taken up with operations. In this lecture, we will learn an operation between two functions or signals that is probably new to you. It is called convolution. We'll start with some motivation and then we'll derive the convolution formula. Convolution will basically allow us to compute the output of a system to a given input when the system is of a special class called an LTI system, a linear time invariant system. Computing or predicting the output of a system to a given input is important in many applications. We'll now discuss a few examples which will be detailed later. Say for instance that we want to predict the trajectory of a ball after a soccer robot kicks it. Let us focus on a pass where the ball moves along the pitch in a straight line. The input is the force over time applied to the ball and the output is the ball's position. Different inputs will leave, lead to different outputs. For simplified models that capture this problem, where for instance the friction is proportional to the speed, we can compute or predict the ball's position with convolution. A related problem is to predict the impact of road bumps on the comfort of a passenger. The input here is the height of the road bumps that generate reaction forces to the suspension system of the vehicle, and the output is the deviation of the car along the axis perpendicular to the, to the road. We want to keep these deviations as close as possible to zero. Again, with simplified models, this can be answered through convolution. A very different example is to predict the result of image filters an operation which can, in many cases, also be carried out with convolution. There are filters that allow to highlight the sharp transitions in an image and others that allow to blur an image. Convolution allows us to compute the output image for different filters. Yet another example are distortion devices for sound processing. Given an input signal, With convolution, we can compute the output signal for different distortion effects. Why can't we simply try out and see what happens? Well, we can, but often it is better to do so analytically so that we can predict what will happen. Think about the car suspension example. If you just try out, it can lead to, the, to, to, very strange, to very bad results because you can damage, for instance, your car. Moreover, understanding how to compute the output analytically provides very useful insights that allow to design systems, for instance, image filters, sound filters, etc. We can also simulate the system. Th that is, we can you know, put the input into a computer and see what happens in the computer with the model. However, we do not obtain dimension insights and we do that we obtain when we do so analytically. 